Today I'm going to show you what has to be one of the weirdest things in Madison. Hang around. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Zach. I'm a second year ophthalmology resident and on this channel I focus from everything about medicine, residency, and ophthalmology. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and leave a like on this video if you do enjoy it. So in this video I want to show you what has to be one of the weirdest things in all of medicine. I'll just preface it by saying that it involves a parasite in a place you would not want a parasite and it involves lasers to kill it. And if you are easily grossed out, I would consider clicking away from this video and going to watch cat videos because this may gross you out a little bit. Alright, you've been warned, let's get into it. So our saga begins here, and here, and here. And it involves the parasites that make these furry little creatures their home. Specifically, these parasites. So there are a number of different parasitic worms that can actually cause this disease, and the name of the disease is this, Duzen for short. So parasites can have pretty complex life cycles and it can often involve multiple different hosts and even incidental hosts, which are ones that are not a critical, crucial part of the parasite's life cycle, but sometimes the parasite finds its way into that host. And if you're unlucky enough to actually ingest the feces of one of these furry little creatures that has parasite eggs in it, they can make their way into you. Some of them, like the hookworm, can even penetrate through the skin and get in your bloodstream. They then sometimes will make their way to the small intestine, doing that by going to the lungs, crossing the alveoli, going up the bronchioalveolar tree, into the pharynx, getting swallowed, and then they're able to shed their eggs in the digestive tract. However, sometimes they will take a different course and end up in your eye. Because the choroid or part of the blood supply to the eye is one of the most highly vascularized tissues in the body, these worms can make their way to the eye and then they like to hang out in the subretinal space. So think of the subretinal space as this. If this were the back inside of the eye, and the retina is almost like a very thin layer of tissue that's just kind of plastered up against the inside back of the eye. And the paper is actually a good representation because the thickness of the retina is only about one to three thicknesses of a piece of printer paper. So the place this worm likes to hide out is actually underneath the retina and in front of the back of the inside of the eye and it can swim around all underneath the retina. And it can leave a wave of destruction as it swims around underneath the retina. And you can even actually see little tracks of where the worm has been, kind of like little snail tracks. It's even more rare if it is present to actually see the worm. But if we're really convinced that this is what's going on, we still don't see the worm, we can treat with medications, oral medications like anti-helminthics, like albendazole, to get rid of the parasites. But if we do see the worm, this is where things actually get pretty interesting. That's when it's time to actually fire up the laser and get ready to shoot this thing in the head. So the worm already doesn't like light. So when you shine light in with a slit lamp or with an indirect ophthalmoscope to even be able to see it, it's gonna wanna swim away from the light. So we have to use a special technique to actually capture it. And what that is, is corralling the worm with a circle of laser barricade. That means putting laser dots in a circle around the worm. And the reason that works is the laser acts almost like a spot of glue adhering that retina to the back inside of the eye in such a way that the worm can't swim around underneath it anymore and it gets trapped in that circle. Once we have the circle, we can actually blast within the circle and just annihilate the worm. Now you want to shoot it in the head if possible. Don't ask me how you know which end is the head, but basically you're just going to blast the entire worm and fill in that circle that it's trapped in. Guys, I am not making this up. Let's actually watch a video of it. Okay, so we're inside the eye here. It's black and white view and you can see the dark uh, veins and arteries. Those are the blood vessels. And you can also see this white spaghetti looking noodle thing that's wriggling around. That's the worm. It's underneath the retina, but the retina is clear. That's why we're able to see it. And it'll leave tracks of destruction wherever it swims around. So the first thing to do is actually barricade the worm in place. So you can see here they're making a circle of white laser around the worm, that red dot's where the laser's shooting. Once it's trapped, you fill in that circle, blasting away at the worm and killing it. And in the end, you'll see that what's left is kind of this white circle of laser spots. If you look really closely, you can actually see the worm in that area of laser, now dead. So you're probably asking, well, we're lasering away at the retina. Isn't that bad for the retina? Well, the hope is that the nematode or the worm is out in the peripheral retina, not in the center part. If it's in the macula or fovea, we can't really laser there because then we risk 
basically damaging the central vision. So if the worm were smart, that's where it would hide. But assuming it's out in the peripheral retina, we're able to safely put laser there, and it really doesn't leave a lot of side effects for the patient. They often don't notice a scotoma. They don't really have a lot of visual field defects that they notice, and it shouldn't really cause any problems from the laser itself. That has to be one of the weirdest things in all of medicine. So the morals to the story here are, one, do not ingest feces of dogs, raccoons, or skunks. Two, do not walk around barefooted in the mud where these worms could penetrate through the skin. And three, ophthalmology has to be the coolest specialty there is. If you are in medicine and you have seen something weirder than this, let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to hear about it. Don't start worrying that you have this. I just want to share it with you because it does exist and it's very weird and I thought it was awesome. So if you guys like this video, consider subscribing to the channel, consider leaving a like. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD and I'll see you guys in the next one.